Good, happy Thursday morning, October 18, 2018. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, 1986 triple fatal arson case remains unsolved. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. out the door when it matters most for more than a decade he's been right there everywhere and when american jobs are on the line he leads the charge abc's world news tonight with david muir is america's most watched newscast and we thank you Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we have some good news. Red Sox won one win from the World Series after wild heart stopping victory. And Red Sox won eight to six against Houston Astros in game four last night. Congratulations, Boston Red Sox. Keep up the great work. Candidates running for first congressional district square off in debate. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8, Paul Merrill. Good afternoon. For the next 45 minutes, the candidates seeking Maine's first congressional district seat will be discussing the issues in this election and debating each other. Thanks for joining us. I'm Paul Merrill. We'll begin by introducing the candidates. Here they are in alphabetical order. Independent Marty Broman, Republican Mark Holbrook, and Democrat Shelley Pingree. 
The candidates will have one minute each to answer each question. There will be 30-second rebuttals at my discretion. We're going to begin with 60-second opening statements. We're going to begin, again, in alphabetical order. We'll try to rotate throughout the, the debate, but we'll start with Marty Groman. Thanks, Paul. I must have put in thousands of miles on my... Okay, and that is some of the video of the debate. The three candidates running for Maine's 1st Congressional District took part in a debate Wednesday on WMTW Studios. Incumbent Democratic Charlie Pigri is being challenged by Republican Mark Holbrook and Independent Marty Graham. Here's what Wall Street isn't paying attention to from the Fed. The Federal Reserve has been telegraphing to the market that it intends to keep rising rates both to stave off high inflations and to prevent financial markets from getting unhigher. The market, though, seems to stop reading after the inflation part. Friend of Jamal Khashoggi, Turkish officials said journalists killed in Barb Barrack Way. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Every child needs clothing to wear, and we discovered we can really help people with disabilities just by doing a few things differently with our Cat and Jack clothing. The really great part about working on this type of product is meeting the families. I just hugged her. I just had to hug her and tell her how important this is. Thanks to the Cat and Jack adaptive line, Bentley just gets to be a kid for once. New reporting, the mystery deepening. Grim new details tonight in the disappearance of Washington Post writer Jamal Khashoggi and what might have happened to him. It was 15 days ago now that he went into Saudi Arabia's consulate in Istanbul, never to be seen again. And tonight, we are now hearing from a close friend of Khashoggi's. His friend says that Khashoggi feared for his own safety. And that friend now revealing what Turkish authorities have told him, what they think happened inside. And this evening, President Trump has asked about the alleged recordings of what transpired and what the president is now saying. ABC senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel leading us off tonight from Turkey. Tonight, shocking new details about what may have happened to the Washington Post writer inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. When Jamal Khashoggi went in, he told his fiance to call two people if he got into trouble. One was one of his closest friends, and tonight, in his first sit-down interview with U.S. media, he tells me they not only killed him in the consulate, but also in a barbaric way. Turan Kislaci describing what he was told in multiple briefings with Turkish security officials. There have been repeated claims that there is proof uh, that Mr. Khashoggi was killed. That there is an audio recording. Are you aware of that? Security officials said they do have audio, he tells us. He says the recordings reveal when Khashoggi walked into the consulate, he was given a document to sign. He refused and was then killed. Tonight, the New York Times reporting Turkish authorities say the audio tapes indicate the hit squad beheaded and dismembered him. Turkish authorities say Khashoggi's body was then taken over to the residence. Tonight, Turkish forensic investigators are combing through the grounds and Turkish officials releasing to a Turkish newspaper images of 15 Saudis they say traveled to Istanbul the day Khashoggi went missing. According to the New York Times, among the suspects, an autopsy expert. The Times also reports several of the suspects have ties to the Saudi crown prince, like this man, Maha Abdulaziz Mutreb. He was allegedly in Istanbul the day Khashoggi went missing. 
also seen here in Boston within a few feet of the Crown Prince in March of this year. One month later, both of the men in Houston and in the same month traveling together in Madrid, calling into question President Trump's remarks on Monday that rogue killers might be responsible. Today, the president asked if he's providing cover for the Saudis. I'm not giving cover at all. With that being said, Saudi Arabia has been a very important ally of ours in the Middle East. So let's get right to Ian Panel again tonight in Istanbul. And Ian, there's been so much reporting on the alleged audio that might have captured what played out here. But as far as we know, reporters have not heard the recording, certainly not the public. But Ian, tonight President Trump has said he's asked for those recordings. Yeah, that's right. Apparently the message has been conveyed to Turkish authorities. President Trump wants either audio or video recordings, whichever exists. He's waiting for a full report from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. He's also made it very clear that America is not yet ready to walk away from one of its closest allies, the Saudis. David? Ian Panel leading us off tonight. Ian, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.